Hey guys, so we are just picking up where we left off. The last clip from part one of this video, you guys would have seen me fitting my client, Giselle, in her twirl gown. And all the changes that we would have made on that dress, we basically transferred it to the sketch of our design. So this is her twirl dress here. I am just examining exactly where we would have made those changes. And now I am transferring those changes from the twirl dress to our pattern pieces. So wherever we would have put that, so wherever we would have pulled the fabric to make the dress fit a little better, we are just making those changes to the pattern itself. And once the pattern is perfect, we can go ahead and prep to cut our real fabric. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I cannot start a dress or any white piece in particular <laughs> uh, without cleaning all of my surfaces. So I went ahead and cleaned my surface and now I am just doing a quick double check of all the things that I would need before I get started. So I have my sketch because we want to keep our sketch on hand. I have my pattern pieces and all of them are connected because I just needed to do a last double check that all the pieces were lining up perfectly. I have six yards for our top layer and this is bridal satin. I have six yards for our lining layer, bridal satin as well. And I have six yards of cotton for our middle layer. So in total, we have 18 yards of fabric that's gonna give us our dress. I have boning, uh, both enclosed in casing as well as just regular boning that we're gonna put in our own casing. I have two pairs of padding for the bar cups, fabric scissors, measuring tape, and two invisible zippers. Now I'm only going to use one, but it's always good to have a backup zipper just in case anything happens during the process of constructing your gown. You have a backup one and you can just remove the one that doesn't work and use your backup zipper. Alright, so now that I have everything in front of me and uh, nothing is missing, we could just go ahead and begin. The first thing I'm doing before I start my construction is I'm changing the needle of my machine. And before I uh, started constructing, I went ahead and cleaned down this machine with soap and water as well. And I sanitized the top, just like I did with my cutting table. I'm just putting together the middle layer of our dress first. And this is the top part of our dress. So just like how we did in part one, we are literally constructing the dress the exact same way. So if you guys are unsure about anything or maybe I'm not explaining in great detail for this video, you could go ahead and check out part one if you're unsure about anything. So we went ahead and stitched the both sides of the allowance down as well as a half inch away from the hem just to create a tunnel on both sides. And we are now gonna grab our boning and we're gonna insert our boning into our casing.
once we have our top completely constructed and we have our both sets of boarding in there i'm just gonna grab those back ups and we are gonna be doubling up on our back ups guys just like we did in part one of this video i'm just securing my back ups to the top and we are going to grab a needle and thread and hand stitch all around our back ups I'm just pinning those in place before we hand stitch. Now I'm just constructing the skewed part of our dress. And all of this is the middle layer still guys. I think I'll just show you guys how I'm constructing the middle layer. And um, I'm gonna just do the other layers off camera. Because it's the same construction for the top, middle and lining layer. It's really really important to press your seams as you go along so i'm making sure to press my seams as i go along And now I'm just connecting our skirt to our top to create our middle layer. I went ahead and constructed all three layers as you guys can see. All our seams are nice and pressed. And now I'm just going to grab our top layer. And I'm gonna insert our hanger loops now if you guys follow my Instagram you would have already known um, <laughs> the situation with these hanger loops but just for video sake just know that even though we inserted these hanger loops we did replace them with hanger loops that we would have made ourselves just to improve the quality of the hanger loops these that we inserted just now they weren't as good so they really did not withstand against the um the weight of the dress so we did have to go back into the dress create our own hanger loops and make the adjustment so just keep that in mind i'm putting together all three layers of our dress now lining up our zipper and I'm basting my zipper down first I basted the three layers together so I know exactly where the zipper is going to go now I am applying the zipper onto that basting trap that we would have just created I'm securing it with some pins pay attention to the direction of the pins guys And now I'm just grabbing my needle and thread and I am hand stitching uh, just a quick basting stitch to secure our zipper to our three layers. Not three layers, sorry guys, this is actually two layers that it is um 
this is two layers of the dress currently this is the top layer and the middle layer we have not put on the lining layer just yet Okay, once we've tested the way our zipper is reacting and making sure that everything is lined up, and the most important part is that that seam right there lines up on both sides. You never want one to be higher than the other. So once that is good, you've executed your zipper insertion perfectly. I went ahead and put our lining layer on top and we stitched those three layers together. Then I flipped our lining layer inside and that is how we got to this point. And just to secure that lining in place, I'm just putting a nice stay stitch to secure it where it's supposed to be secured. Now at this point, my client came in for her second fitting and this would have been her first fitting with the real dress. And we are just placing the lace exactly where we want it. We went ahead and fit our lace all along the top, along her sleeves, as well as the hem of the dress. And for the next week, I would have just been working on her lace placement as well as a lot of hand stitching so we went ahead and hand stitched her slit close and as you guys can see i am using black gloves and this is just to maintain the uh the white of the dress i guess because you really don't want to chance getting this white stained at any point so as much as you guys can wear gloves while working with white, definitely do so. Alright, your hands do have a lot of natural oils, so that's just something to take into consideration. It also helps you to grip uh, the needle or the fabric in general um, when you're stitching, so that's also something to take into consideration. But I mean, everybody's different. This is just me. Alright, so currently all the lace that you're seeing on top of this dress is just pinned. Nothing is hand stitched yet. We did spend a great deal of time hand stitching each piece of lace together just to make sure that it looks nice and seamless. And it's nice and symmetrical on each side. You guys could definitely check out my Instagram if you want to see up close videos of that. But this part of the video is going to be pretty sped up just because it was a lot of hand stitching y'all it was really a lot of hand stitching Once her slit was hand stitched closed, I went ahead and pressed it to make sure everything was nice and seamless. And we're going to do the same thing to our hem. 
make sure and press in all three layers a half inch in make sure everything is lined up nice and flush pins is secure and then we're gonna hand stitch the entire hem closed Alright, once that is done, I went ahead and started hand stitching our lace on the top of the dress. And this part is. <laughs> you guys enjoy this part. I don't think I need to talk through this part that, that much. You guys just enjoy this part because, woo, baby. It was a lot. It really was a lot. As you guys can see that hanger that hanger loop is obviously a different hanger loop that is the one we made custom from the bridal satin and like i mentioned before the other satin loop just did not um the quality was not good at all so it could not withstand the weight of the dress um so we went ahead and created our own hanger loop and this was perfect Just something to remember guys when you are uh, hand stitching lace to the top layer even if it goes through the second layer just make sure that it does not go through the lining layer all right so you want your top stitches to be very very secure you want your lace to be secured in place but you do not want to see any stitches on the lining layer all right so that's just something to remember For the stitching of the lace on the hem, I had to put this dress on the mannequin, make sure everything was uh, laying nice and, or falling I should say, falling nice and flat or falling the way it's supposed to fall. And then I went ahead and put the lace on, pinned it in place and then we hand stitch all of the lace onto this dress. Now because we were limited on the amount of lace that we had, um, I did have to find a creative way to blend, <laughs> like I'm doing right there. I did have to find a creative way to blend this lace just to make sure that uh, it didn't just stop blunt. All right, so that was a little task in itself, but I enjoyed the process of, you know, just figuring it out. All right, so right now we are creating her sleeves, and these were the lace sleeves that we would have created on her. All right, at this point, I was finished with the dress. This hanger, sorry, not hanger, this garment bag, we did make a custom garment bag out of the satin that remained, as well as some plastic. We also made her a custom mask as well as a custom hanger cover. And I do have a separate video on the on the custom hanger cover if you guys want to check that out. And I believe this was around 3 a.m. while I was putting all of this together. I was super tired <laughs> because I had been hand stitching that entire day through the night. A couple of days before, it was really just a non-stop hand stitching moment y'all it really was so i was just extremely happy to be finished 
I was happy that, you know, everything came out the way that we intended for it to come out. I mean, there were a couple changes that I would have made. But I mean, at this point, we couldn't really do much changes at this point. You know, but just looking back on it, uh, there were a lot of, there were a couple things that I would have done differently to execute this dress a little bit better. But all in all, I'm super happy with the way it turned out and with all the additional things that we were able to add to her experience. So, yeah. We made this custom garment bag so that everything could fit perfectly, including her veil. All right, so we did a three tier veil and she wanted a gold tiara as her accent so we went ahead and got that and we just incorporated her veil this is the blusher that i just flipped over there and like i mentioned in a part one of this video the three tier veil the blusher was 15 inches the uh, middle layer was 30 inches and then the longest part of her veil was 100 inches all right, um, I wish I had gotten to film this part, but just with trying to film this video as well as filming all the additional parts, I really had to pick and choose. So if you guys want a video on how to create a custom veil, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to recreate this video for you guys. So the next day, this is my client, Giselle, and we are trying on her dress for the last and final time. All right, the dress fit her super, super comfortably. She was happy with the way it turned out. And even though at this point in time, I was seeing a lot of different things that I would have loved to change. Uh, I don't think it would have been appropriate to start pointing out all the things that I would have liked to change. So that's just something that you guys could take into consideration. Regardless of what field you're in, when you are creating something for someone else, uh, if they are loving something in the moment, always allow them, make them feel comfortable to tell you if something is off or if they don't like something. But if somebody is loving something in the moment, allow them to love it. That is not the right time to start pointing out all the things that you would have liked to change or all the things that you find uh, not so perfect because then even if they aren't seeing something, by you pointing it out, they're going to start doubting and they're going to start seeing what you're seeing, you know? So if somebody is loving something, allow them to love it. You take mental note for your own personal growth and make sure to just apply those changes next time so that's just something to take into consideration but all in all the dress was super super nice the process even though the process was long i did enjoy this process and i'm definitely a better designer after creating this gown so that is the end of this video guys i really really hope that you guys enjoyed this video i'm super super sorry that it took me this long to post part two but like i told you guys uh just retrieving the footage was a task in itself so that being said i hope you guys enjoyed make sure to leave me a like leave me a comment in the comment section down below subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys in my next one